Hello grade 12 students, welcome to the accounting course again. Today we'll be doing an introduction to companies. So in grade 10, you did what we call a sole trade or a sole proprietorship. In grade 11, you did partnerships. And this year in grade 12, we'll be dealing with companies. You all know that a sole trader is owned by one person meaning the person who owns the business is is known it's just a single individual in a partnership there can be multiple partners who can own that business there are multiple partners this means that when the business becomes in debt or becomes insolvent, or when, when, when it undergoes liquidation, the person who's responsible of paying all the liabilities and the debts owed by the business to other people will be the person who is the owner of the business in case of a sole trader meaning that the, the liability or the liabilities of the business they are in the hands of the person who owns the business he or she is responsible of paying or settling those debts in the case of partnership all the respective partners they are also responsible of paying or settling the debts that are due are due to the business but this is different when it comes to companies the the, the first thing is that companies are owned by people which we call shareholders We are saying they are the owners of a company. But now, the difference is that they own the company, but they do not run the company. The company is being run by people we call directors. So these ones are called owners of the company. And the only reason why they own the company is because they invested their money in the company. They invested their money in the company. Meaning, for example, when the company was, was being registered, these are the people who actually invested their money into the company. You know, they invested capital, they injected com capital into this company, but they do not run the company. Unlike sole traders and partnership, sole traders, the owner becomes available and is present and is takes part in the daily activities that are happening in the company and the partnership as well but when it comes to shareholders that they just provide capital to the company they just provide capital to the company the people who are responsible of running the company and compiling financial statements and everything they are called directors they are the one who run the company They are the ones who run the company. So that's how companies are different to sole traders in partnership. The, another thing that is important is that as individuals, as, as natural persons, we are seen as we are seen as people in the eyes of the law, meaning we have a legal entity. This means that this means that 
we are liable for our own debts, right? But for companies, for companies, as I said before, so traders, the owner of the business is liable for the debts of the company, same as partnership. But in a company, the shareholders have what we call limited liability. what we call limited liability this means that if a company decides maybe undergoes certain troubles and becomes liquidated the shareholders are not responsible to are not responsible of paying the liabilities of the company it means the the people who are responsible of collecting such amounts from the company they cannot go to the shareholders and process their houses or their cars or ask them to pay what the company owes its creditors they cannot do that they have limited liability the liability of the shareholders is only limited to what they have invested in the company that's what they mean that's what this concept limited liability means it means what can only suffer for uh, by the shareholders is the amount of money that they have invested in the business so the liability of the shareholders is only limited to what they have invested in the company right so that's that's just li- that's the limit of their liability you cannot go on and now follow them and go possess their personal belongings or houses or anything of some such nature because they are not liable for the debts of the company. This brings us to the concept of legal, legal entity. That a company, in the eyes of the law, is seen as a separate legal entity. It means a company is seen as a person in the eyes of the law. This means that the company is liable for its own debt and in, hence the shareholders are not liable for the company's debt. So it's seen as a separate legal entity. It means it can be sued. It can be sued just like a person can be sued. It can be sued. It is seen as a person in the eyes of the law. That's the idea that I want you guys, you guys to get. It's seen as a person in the eyes of the law. So now, let's look at the concept of shareholders. How shareholders invest money into the company. So we now know that shareholders, they then they do not participate in the daily activities that happen in the company but they just invest their money the daily activities they are run by the directors of the company so now you should ask yourself how do direct how do the shareholders why do the shareholders invest in the company if they are not there they're not there to monitor the daily activities that are occurring in the company. Um, Is it that risky? But then, it is not due to the fact that we're having things like the Companies Act of 2008. We're also having what we call the MOI, the Memorandum 
of incorporation. Now, the memorandum of incorporation in the Companies Act are tools that are used to set out regulations and rules to 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 tell the the directors and the shareholders how they should behave in other words these things these two things help help shareholders not to be exploited by the directors they they help they enhance the trust that the shareholders have to the directors. You know, because they have invested their money. So these things, they set out regulations and rules which enables shareholders to invest into companies freely without being scared that they might be exploited by the directors. You know, and another interesting fact is that the directors are appointed by the shareholders. The shareholders. Directors are appointed by the shareholders or appointed by the shareholders in other words the shareholders get to pick who they want who they want to run their the company that's one of that that's one way in which uh, these two these two tools enables shareholders to you know to be confident and to invest in a company freely. That's one way. Another way is that as the directors are running the company, at the end of the financial year, there's what we call the AGM. This is the annual general meeting. At the AGM, this is where the directors sort of like report to the shareholders. It only happens once. They report to shareholders the progress of the company and they present the financial statements of the company to the shareholders. And everything that occurred during the financial day, that's where they report, you know, since the shareholders were not present and were not participating in the daily activities that were happening in the company. That's why we're having the annual general meeting. That's where companies and directors meet, where directors come and report to shareholders, giving them a summary of what happened. Uh, during the financial